Hi, I'm Stephen Crow, and today I want to show you how you can improve your watercolours. But first, let me show you the photograph I'm going to be using today. This was uh, sent to me by Martin. That's a it's a simple landscape. Um, it's got nice light coming straight from above and reflected off the the water here. So let's have a go at this. But first, I'll show you my materials. I've got the same setup as I did last time. We've got ultramarine. What's normally lemon yellow is cadmium yellow because I've uh, I bought the wrong one. Payne's grey, lizard crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red. Got the large Ron Ranson Ake down here, and 15 by 11 Fabriano 130 pound watercolour paper. So quick look again at the photograph, and then I'll get cracking. So the first thing I'm going to do is using the big hake, I'm just going to wet the paper all over, this will soften the sky up and uh, we'll get no hard edges, so all nice fluffy clouds and a few colours blending into others. Um, so I'm going to start off just a little bit of raw sienna, there's not much in the, in the photograph. Predominantly sort of, I'm seeing sort of blues mainly, so let's Go with a bit of blue, a bit of Payne's grey. Yeah, There's sort of light coming from the top, so normally I'll do it down the middle, so I'm, let's just see how it works. I might have to have a couple of goes at this in terms of the, the initial wash, I'm not quite sure. I'm going to do it yet. Just, I'm just going to. I'm just curious. See how it pans out. But for now, if we say we've got just taking this ultramarine right down to the bottom. There's loads of little unmixed bits there. That's what's going on there. But uh, like I say, that well mixing together. So don't worry about that. I do I keep catching the yellow as I'm going around. Now I think I'm gonna need a second wash at this. So first I'm just gonna try and see how this works. I'm just using a clean brush and I'm just what this actually does. Nah, it looks a bit naff that does though. Maybe more water, more lighting. Let's see what this does. That looks even worse. It's what watercolour is all about. It's so easy to experiment, you know what I mean? Like I say, what I'm going to do is maybe if I brush up from the bottom, no that ain't going to work either is it? So what I'm going to do, get that initial wash on, I'm going to dry it and then I'm going to have another go at it. stretch a little bit so I'm just going to pull it flat so it's against the uh, my piece of plywood that I have it fixed to on this easel upright the only reason it's sort of almost 90 degrees just to suit the camera angle really you don't have to have it this this high up so I'm going to wet the brush I'm going to put another wash on top of that and we'll just see what we end up with right so I'm going to back into these two colours 
Now I want this area, I'm trying to create this sort of light effect coming down from the top. So let's see what I can get this time. So this time I'm just sort of pushing it up, I'm coming from below and pushing it up. Then just use the clean damp brush. And just try and just try and blend it together a little bit. Blend it together. And then back into these two colours. Just bring these corners in. It's, it's slowly, it's looking better than it did. I'm wondering will I get away with that? Do I need it a bit darker? Um, you know what, I might just... Oh, can I get a bit of tissue in there? A little bit of tissue work. A few more clouds there. I mean, imagine just that the light's just catching these clouds now. Up there. Something like that. It'll be on the other side as well. I think I'm fairly, fairly happy with that. Can I just get this a little bit lighter maybe? Just lighten it a little bit more. Actually, it's a dirty tissue, you can see the little bits. In fact, I could lighten it by Picking up old bits of paint here on, on the wood. Uh, I'm, I'm going to leave it at that now. I'm fairly happy with that. So we've got sort of light coming down, something like that. Now I think I might have to dry it a little bit to do the next part. Top gear's gone on me on me um me air dryer. So it didn't get any, it's starting to wear out now. I'll have to get a new one. So I'm just gonna make sure that's flat now against the board before I carry on. So we've got a nice little background, we've got the light coming down, reflecting the water's down there, so it's reflecting off the water. You know, nice sort of sort of abstracty thing to work with. <clears throat> just dipping the tips of my brush into the wall, just to bring all the airs back together. Now I want just a, a very light tonal mix now. Lots of water on that, very little paint. Just to put the background hills in. So the water's about a third of the way off, the horizon line's about there. So I just want now these, oh actually I might have done these two lights. I don't think they're going to show up very well. A little bit stronger I think. A little bit stronger. So 
they're the distant ones, sort of light zone. Again, I'll have to excuse the air dryer. Now the Nida Hills, the ones right next to the bank, want this really strong. I'll probably end up doing this with just the two colours, apart from that initial bit of raw sienna. I'm just using Payne's grey and ultramarine. So now we've got these closer hills. You see, because I put these on stronger now, pushing those further lighter toned hills right back, right back, and bringing these ones much closer to us. Bringing these down there to the, the water level. I'm just trying now to get get this parallel with the bottom of the, the page, bottom of the, the uh, paper. Yeah, a bit of blue, a bit of Payne's Payne's grey, very dark mix. And although it's not in the in the photograph, if you just leave little bits here unpainted, it just looks like highlights just catching things. I'm just trying to make sure. So if you want to, if you want a really straight, the easiest way of getting a straight, just use some masking tape. I used to use masking tape, you just me measure it up each side to make sure it's exactly the same height and just run some tape across. It's the easiest way to make sure you get a perfectly straight line. I think that's, that's about there, I think. So, there's a sort of middle ground now. And next we've got this foreground. And the foreground, again, really, really dark silhouetted against all this light and it's pushed right on high up um, just need to dry that so. The reason I dried it is because part of this foreground, I'll show you, right. is just pushing up into that distant, into that background there. So I just wanted to dry it just to make sure there was no, the paint wasn't mixing all in together. much much detail in the foreground so what I'm going to do I'm just going to pretty much just block it in just leave unpainted bits here and there just to look like highlights on things I think there's like a building or something I'll have a, I'll have a look in a minute just blocking this in These little unpainted bits, you just get little highlights here and there. And I think there's a building just down here, so I'm just gonna just suggest that slightly. I put too much detail in, but I'm not gonna put any detail, I'm just gonna leave it like that really. 
and then give that a quick draw. Maybe I should, because that could be our focal point, if I just try to emphasise it a little bit more. That can be our little focal point there. And then because tonal wise, this is just a little bit darker than that. I've got, I need to dry it so I can put another layer on just to make it dark. Although it's not quite sure how much darker I can get it. So again, just a bit of blue, a bit of Payne's grey. Up there, so our little, our little house. And I'll get it much darker than this now. Yeah, it's it's very subtle. I think it's just slightly darker than that, but I'm going to worry about it too much. Um, what else? Is there anything else we can put in? Yeah, I think I might do now. Let's take the card and just. Just little things here and there. Just, just, to, just to break up this, this dark mass. Um, or something to get into there. Just little details, they, they, they don't really mean much, just, just little things happening here and there. But I'm having to do it where the paint's still wet, most of this is dry now because I put the paint on so thick. It's just uh, anything down there. It's just hints of, of things happening there and there. Just a few little grasses here and there. I think, I think I'm just about done, so all I need to do is switch to the little brush. Go a little bird up there in the sky somewhere. Five little birds and then finally Sure, how well this is going to show up, but just looking for a slightly lighter place I can put me, me, me name. I'm going to pop down there. Just about to see. So let, let's see what it looks like with the mount on. So here's the, uh, the painting with the mount on. So let's have another look at the photograph. So you can see that the biggest challenge was how do you get that? sort of bright light at the top of the sky and to be honest I, I, um, I need to have a think about that how, how to create that effect because um, it looks a little bit of a mess so there's quite a, a subtle transition between the light going down to the sort of darker area below and then again big contrast then reflecting the light off the water 
I'll have to have a bit of a practice with this, this sort of sky. Um, also the, the distant hills, so you've got two layers of hills there, the distant ones there. I haven't got them quite as pronounced as they are in the, uh, in the photograph. In places they just can disappear completely. Then we've got our light reflecting very strongly on the water there which I've managed to get in and it sort of contrasts nicely against this strong, very really dark foreground and also that dark middle layer there of those hills. And then the foreground, I think it's the angle, I had this, uh, I had my lid, but it looked, it looked, from where I was looking when I was painting, this foreground looked darker, I couldn't, I couldn't see any detail at all, apart from this, what looks like a little building there. So I'll just put this foreground in really dark a little, little building there that's sort of acting as a, as a focal point and then just a few um, scratches with the card just here and there just to break up this black mass and, and offer a little bit of detail here and there and then I'll just sort of, sort of scratched in like a suggest a little little path or something running running to the house so looking at the photo from here this, this was the sort of view I was working with so that's it for that one. A um, bit of practice I need for the for those sorts of skies, but I hope you enjoy that. Um, don't forget to subscribe, share, um, leave your comments below. I'm, I'd be interested to see what you think. Um, so until next time, keep practicing and happy painting.